So hello and welcome to the video. Now a while ago I made a video about how to value an Avio. I try not to recycle content but when I was re-watching that video quite recently I was shocked to discover that I'd made it over two years ago. And lots of things have changed over the last two years which means that a few of the things I said in that video are now not quite right. So as the topic is really important I'd started to think about revisiting it. Then, as I was having a beer with a friend not that long ago, he said something to me that made my blood run cold. Okay, I'm exaggerating a bit, but it showed me that my work is not yet done. And my friend reported how happy he was to have made a redemption that only cost him 50p. And without telling me anything else about the redemption, the fact that he only paid 50p told me that he'd got a bad deal for his avios. So in this video I'll explain how I know that that was the case and I'll show you why most of the redemptions that you will be offered are terrible value. I like lists of six so I'll structure this as the six ways you shouldn't spend your avios but to deviate from my own format slightly I'll also include the one way that you should spend them. So if that sounds good stick around! Hi, I'm Matt. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.4 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe and you might pick up some hacks, hints and tips to make your next trip better. That old video was triggered by BA and Sainsbury's having entered into an agreement which established a floor valuation for an avio. Avios? I know I pronounce avios weirdly, I made an entire video making fun of it a little while ago, but I'm going to stick with my pronunciation notwithstanding the way BA pronounces it. But by converting avios into nectar points you could then go and spend those nectar points in Sainsbury's and get tangible cash for your avios. Any redemption that delivered value below that level was then demonstrably a bad deal. And even if you don't live in the UK so can't spend nectar points, this floor valuation was significant because it does establish the true value of those avios. Now the first thing that is now inaccurate in that old video is what that floor valuation actually is. When I made the video you could sell 250 avios to the nectar scheme and you would get 400 nectar points in return. Those could then be redeemed in Sainsbury's for £2 off your shopping. So if you do the maths one avio was worth 0.8 of a p. But BA quickly realised that this was far too generous so they revised the rate. So you now need to sell 300 avios in order to get the same 400 nectar points. And doing that maths again that tells you that the floor valuation is now 0.67 of a p. That is the new floor valuation and any redemption that delivers value below 0.67 of a p is clearly a bad idea. Interestingly, and then I use that word advisedly, you can still get 250 avios if you transfer 400 nectar points back across to BA, so move the value in the opposite direction. So if you do that you're effectively buying avios for 0.8 of a p each but you'll only get 0.67 of a p if you sell them back again to Sainsbury's. You'll probably be familiar with the concept of there being a spread between the buy and sell prices of a financial instrument and that's effectively what's happening here. It's a 20% spread whereas previously there was no spread at all. Now as we'll see in a moment I am a buyer of avios at 0.8 of a p each so every nectar point I harvest I transfer back into the BA scheme for avios. But I am not a seller of avios at 0.67 of a p so I would never move avios in the opposite direction. So the first thing you shouldn't spend your avios on is buying nectar points at Sainsbury's even if that is the floor valuation. Well if I'm happy to spend 0.8 of a p to buy avios what am I spending those avios on? And that is something that delivers value in excess of 0.8 of a p each. So let's deal with the one thing that I do spend my avios on which is flights. Last year I made a video about how many avios I earned in 2022 and I made a separate video about how I spent them. I will repeat that exercise in a couple of weeks time to cover 2023. But for now here's a summary from both of those videos of how I spent my last 600,000 avios or so. I've made 14 redemptions over that two year period and if you compare what I spent on those flights with what it would have cost to buy them for cash I reckon I've got over 4p in value for every one of those avios that I've spent. 
That's five times the cost that I'm prepared to pay for them, which is 0.8 of a P, and it's six times the value you would get if you transferred them across to Sainsbury's to spend. Buying something for 0.8 of a P and selling it for over 4P makes good sense to me. But my spending has a couple of features to it, which means most people won't generate this much value. I tend to make one-way redemptions. I fly mainly to make videos, and I like to travel outbound and back, either on different airlines or in different classes, to get as much content as possible out of each trip. One-way fares tend to be a lot more expensive than returns, which tends to bias up the return that I generate on my avios. Some airlines, like American and Alaska, tend not to build a premium into their one-way fares, so you can see the value I got for those flights was lower than average. That Miami to JFK redemption was a very marginal decision, but I was working to a 0.8 of a P valuation, so I decided to take the redemption option. Those intercontinental trips, though, can be very expensive if bought one way. That Dublin to London to Boston trip was stupidly expensive. Of course, if you need to book a one-way trip, then remembering that you can often get great value out of a redemption is worth filing away. But if you tend to redeem for return trips, you'll probably not do quite as well as I have over the long run. Secondly, I'm talking about value here rather than the opportunity cost, which is another way of saying that I got £5,600 of value out of that Boston trip, but there is no way I would ever have actually paid that for that ticket. Even if I won the lottery or I had Trek Trendy's AdSense revenue, I still don't think I would have booked that flight for cash. So this analysis is all about the hypothetical value I achieved rather than the impact it had on my bank account. But to try to still prove the point about there being value in redemptions, I've taken out that Boston and also the Doha flights to see what value I got excluding them. And without those two redemptions, I'm still getting 3.4p per avio. And the third point I need to make is that two of these trips involve me trading in a voucher, one an Amex voucher and the second a Barclays voucher. These are a topic for another day, but I tend to look upon the avios those cards generate me as covering the cost of those cards, such that the upgrade vouchers I receive are effectively free. So in my mind, the analysis still works, but I have done the exercise of equalizing out the impact of those vouchers, and I'm still getting a value of 2.4p on average per avio, which I think you'll agree is still a very strong rate, particularly if you're acquiring your avios for less than a penny each. The second thing I won't spend my avios on is flights, if they don't meet my valuation criteria. So how do I work that out? Well, it's reasonably simple to do this. You need a little bit of maths, and BA doesn't make it super easy for you to work it out, but it is easy enough. Let me show you. So I picked a date next month for a one-way trip to Oslo. The maths is the same for a return trip, but it's slightly easier with one way, so let's focus on that for this illustration. There's four flights from London to Oslo that day, and it took me a while, but I found a day where all four flights have reward availability in both economy and the business cabins. So let's look at economy first, and the cheapest option is the evening flight at £55, which is pretty good value, actually. If you look at the same flight through the Redemption Avenue, you'll see they're offering you the seat for 11,750 avios plus 50p. Hey, that's where the 50p option popped up that excited my friend so much. And paying 50p for a flight to Oslo sounds pretty good to me. But a theme that I will return to is that if BA offers you something, that's likely to be a good deal for BA and not perhaps a good deal for you. So using this data, you can see that the 11,750 avios is saving you the 55 pounds and 79 pence fare, less the 50p that you still have to pay. But by the power of maths, each avio is getting you 0.46p of value, which is a no from me. I'll jump now to the most expensive economy seat available that day, which is the late morning flight, where a seat is being sold for £142. The reward pricing is the same for all economy seats on that day. It's a fixed table, so it'll cost you the same 11,750 avios plus the same 50p. Maths, 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 but you're getting 1.2p in value per avio, which is a yes from me. If you click on the More Pricing Options button, you'll see some alternatives, including 7,250 avios plus £17.50, which older viewers may recognise as being the only price that BA used to offer you for an economy redemption, the old reward flight saver, if you remember that terminology. You need to throw together a quick table, but you'll quickly see that the 50p headline option that BA offers you is actually the worst valuation of avios that you can get. It's the best for BA, but it's the worst for you. And don't forget that to start out with, BA actually hides these options. 
each reduction in the number of avios you're contributing increases the value BA will give you for each of those avios. And the lowest option actually gives you 3.34p in value per avio. If perhaps you don't earn that many avios over the course of the year, so you want to maximize the value you're getting for every single one of them, this is the option you would then choose. If you earn lots and lots of avios, the original valuation is actually acceptable, so you may choose that one. Or you may choose to go somewhere down the chart as to start out with the cash contributions increment very slowly and the value of avios increases quite quickly. As I've said, my redemption patterns tend to be a little bit odd and over the last two years I've achieved a superior average valuation to even the best option available here. But I also turn over quite a lot of avios each year, so if I had to be on this flight, if I was positioning for another flight for example, I would probably go for the 7,000 avios option, pay the £17.50 and be pretty happy to have gotten 1.7p in value for each of those avios. If you work up the table to look at the redemption options on that cheaper flight, you'll see that there isn't the same pattern of increasing value. In fact, the underlying cash fare is so low, because this table is fixed across all redemptions, the lowest avios option is actually even worse value than the headline one that BA offers you. The maths of a redemption clearly doesn't work when the underlying fare is so cheap, so I would just buy the seat for cash. And I did the same exercise for the cheapest and most expensive business class option. Every avios option on the expensive flight looks pretty good, and even the options on the cheaper flight are acceptable too. Hey, perhaps I was a bit harsh on my friend for having taken the 50p option because it can deliver an acceptable value. But as you can see, even if it does, the 50p option is still the best one for BA, and some of these other options would have delivered him better value. So that's how I determine the redemption value of an avio. It takes a little bit of time, there's a little bit of maths, and you need to know the fare the seat is being sold at. But it's pretty quick to do, and it saves you from making a big mistake when you're redeeming your hard-earned avios. The third way that I wouldn't spend avios reveals itself after you decide to pay cash for a ticket. On the payment page, BA will tempt you to trade in some avios to reduce the cash required on the fare. After choosing that £55 economy ticket, you are invited to trade in avios to save up to £13 on the fare. Woohoo! The maths here is a little bit simpler, but you can very quickly see that whilst the first option is acceptable, it rapidly gets worse the more avios you contribute. And if you chose the most expensive economy fare, you get those same three options but more, all of which get worse as you go down. Now, I have taken that 1p valuation in the past for a £10 discount, but I would never take any other option. This is great for BA, which is why it is promoted so prominently, but generally it's a terrible idea for you. Now there's an important point in here if you'll forgive a momentary digression. If you take an avios discount when buying a seat for cash, you end up paying a mixture of cash and avios for your ticket. If you book a redemption but reduce the number of avios required by contributing some cash, again you end up with a ticket and you've spent a mixture of cash and avios. What you're paying for your seat ends up feeling very similar, both your bank and your avios balance have been depleted slightly. But only one of those routes will end up with you earning avios and tier points on the flight, and that is by purchasing the seat, even if you reduce the cost of that purchase with avios. All seat purchases, regardless of how you end up paying for them, earn you tier points, whereas all redemptions don't. This is quite confusing and it is a little bit odd, but the important thing to remember is that the pathway you set out down when you are booking a seat determines whether you're going to earn tier points. A purchase of a seat earns tier points, a redemption for a seat never will. Right, the fourth way I wouldn't spend avios is another change to the program that has arisen since I made that last video. Gold priority rewards used to deliver great value in certain circumstances. They still can work, but generally these days they're something I just wouldn't pursue. Redemptions are only an option when a redemption seat is available. When flights get full, the redemption seats disappear and the fares go up. A gold priority reward allows you to open up a revenue seat for redemption, although it will cost you twice the avios. So let's look at how it worked when I made that original video and let's look again at that Oslo flight as the base of our example. Let's assume that flight is now pretty full, all the reward seats have gone, and the fares being offered are 50% higher in economy and business than the most expensive option we looked at before. So under the old pricing structure, double the avios used to deliver acceptable pricing in both the economy and the business cabin. What BA has changed is that they now force their agents to use the highest avios, lowest cash option to price up those gold priority rewards. 
which means you only have to pay 50p for that redemption. But remember, if BA is offering you something, it's likely to be good for them and not so good for you. And it is, if you double the avios required, even with that lower cash payment, you'll see the value you're getting from those avios has been gutted. That business option is probably still okay, but it's really not brilliant. It's a real pain that BA has done this, and it's a bit of a kick in the teeth for their most loyal customers, because you need to be a gold card holder to be able to do this. And the other small print is that you need to do it more than 30 days before travel, and you have to ring them up to release the seat. It might still work in extreme circumstances, but it's really not something I even think about these days because the value of it has been ripped out. The fifth thing I won't spend avios on is hotels and cars. Now, BA actually makes it quite easy to see the value you're getting when you try and redeem avios for a hotel. I looked at hotels in Oslo for the two nights after that flight we were looking at, and the first two hotels I found offered you exactly 0.5 of a P per avio. The prices are the same as you see if you go through the BA holiday portal, which I suppose is something. But I looked both of those properties up on Trivago, and you can get into both of them for less than BA is offering, even taking into account that handful of avios they will give you for booking through BA holidays. So I wouldn't book a hotel through BA for avios, and I also wouldn't book a hotel through BA for cash either. And I looked at car rentals and it was exactly the same story, although the rate they'll give you for the avios is 0.57 of a P for some reason, slightly better, but still not good enough. And the sixth thing I won't spend avios on is anything else. BA will tempt you with experiences, with wine, and occasionally with other things too. But in every case, BA is controlling the valuation and you're unlikely to get a good deal. By all means, consider those options, but do the calculation yourself to see the value you are getting, and I am prepared to wager that in every case, it'll be a bad deal. So there you go, that's six ways that I won't spend avios, which is basically everything except flight redemptions, and even then, I will go through the mathematical exercise to make sure I'm getting worthwhile value from a redemption. But I want to make two quick final points. The first is that there is another worthwhile use of your avios, which is to donate them through BA's Better World Community Fund. And BA will match any donations made to that fund up to a limit. They say they still are, which suggests they haven't reached that limit, but if they are, that is quite a generous top up. I had a quick trawl through the terms and conditions, and I couldn't see the valuation BA is using for its avios because they're obviously converting them in cash to give them to the charities, but I'd wager it's half a P per avio or thereabouts. And finally, there is one exception to all of this, which is the situation where you have more avios than you can ever possibly spend on high value redemptions. As I've said many times, holding a large balance in any loyalty program is usually a bad idea because it is being run for the scheme owner rather than for the scheme member, and there is always a risk that your points are devalued, which reduces the value that you are holding in that program. I know people who put tens of thousands of pounds of business expenses through their business Amex every month and have got millions of avios out of it as a result. The more avios you have, the lower the valuation you should be prepared to accept when trading them in. That opens up redemption options that those of us with a limited amount of avios would never consider. Even more so if the cost of acquiring those avios is actually being borne by somebody else, such as your employer. If that is you, be careful you're not breaking the terms and conditions of your credit card when doing this, but ignore all of this, go bonkers, and have fun. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Give this video a like if you did, and leave me a comment. Are you gonna now look at the value of redemption differently having watched this video? Please subscribe if you're new and you like this sort of thing. And if you'd like to support what I'm doing more directly, there is a Patreon group which gives access to our WhatsApp chats, regular meetups that we've started holding. We've started taking trips together as well, and it is great fun. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.